with the abundance of the cultural backgrounds, with the abundance of gifts that everybody brings. Just because they don't speak the language does not, bring, does not mean they don't bring other gifts to the school. So I truly would like to take all of that and celebrate it. Hi, and welcome to the SMA Audio Experience Podcast. It's brought to you by St. Michael San Diego's technology and social media team. St. Michael Academy San Diego is a Catholic school located in the South Bay region of San Diego County. We've been educating students pre-K through 8th grade for over 50 years. On this podcast, we interview and discuss people, organizations, and topics impacting St. Michael Academy and the community around us. When you're here, you're home. Hey, and welcome to another episode of the SMA Audio Experience Podcast. On this week, we have none other than Principal Elizabeth Joseph. She's the principal over at St. Francis of Assisi Catholic School in Vista, California. Today's topic, we will be discussing celebrating our differences. Principal Joseph, thanks so much for joining us on the podcast today. How's your day going today? It's going very well. Thank you for having me. Awesome. That's fantastic. And, you know, when we reached out to you, um, we actually, the backstory for everybody who's listening is um, about two to three weeks ago, we reached out to one of our past podcast guests, who is Mr. Matthew Cordes. And we asked him, hey, Mm -hmm. who can you uh, recommend? You know, do you have a list of people you'd love to recommend any uh, outstanding teachers or principals or leaders in the uh, Catholic school you know, community here in San Diego, and your name popped up. So we um, thank you for uh, taking our invitation. And we're going to be actually talking about a great topic today, which is celebrating our differences. So I'm, I'm really excited. I hope you are too, um, to kind of go more into that. Absolutely. I'm really excited. This is a topic that is really close to my heart. So I'm, I'm really excited for today. Fantastic. And, you know, for those who, who haven't met you, you know, can you give a little introduction about yourself, you know, the fantastic school that you lead out here in Vista, California, uh, and also Absolutely. a little bit more about um, why, why that celebrating our differences means so much to you? Okay, sure. I was born and brought up in India, and I've been here since a very long time. I've lived here for more than half my life, so this is home, but my cultural background is so ingrained in me and I bring that to everything that I do. I've been a principal for five years now and um, love every day, coming to work every day. And this is a topic that is so close to my heart because coming from India, being here and being able to go through the schooling system here and being able to succeed, I think it's a great achievement for me, but I would love to bring that to other people who think, who come to this country and who cannot do well. Absolutely. They, everyone can succeed here. So that is why the subject is so close to my heart. And I would love to share what I've done and what I'm doing with everybody. That's fantastic. And, you know, with that, um, can you give a little background for, you know, the, your community of current you know, families and students and also alumni, you know, from how your community is set up, you know, a little bit maybe about where your, your school is located, um, you know, size, um, you know, how yes. long you've been around? Sure. Um, I've, St. Francis of Assisi Catholic School is in the heart of Vista. And Vista, if you look at the demographics of Vista, there is a lot of Latino population here. And the mm-hmm. Church of St. Francis is also one, um, our population at the church is about 95% Hispanic. But when I looked at my school population, it was not truly reflective of the church population. Yes, we do have students from all different cultures. We have students from, um, from Mexico, from the South American countries. We have students from the Philippines, Korea, all over the world. But my population was not truly reflective of the church and the city. So that was why I was like, I was feeling a little bit of a disconnect there because looking at the population of my school, which was not predominantly Hispanic, 
which I was thinking, which I was surprised when I come, first came here because the church was predominantly Hispanic. And so I'm, I was like, why is my school not predominantly Hispanic? But it was, you know, it was a great mix of cultures. So I think my, the, the, what I went on, took on to do was to make sure that we make the school welcoming to every culture, every, you know, everybody who comes from all over the world and make it a place where every student can succeed and get to their full potential. That, no, and that sounds perfect. I mean, that, that is such a, you know, that is such a great vision, um, especially in this day and age of being able to share that pillar with our youth. Uh, it's so impactful because it shows that um, there, there can be things and places and people and connections that they make that are bigger than themselves or bigger than what they know, right? When they, as they're growing mm -hmm. up. Uh, and mm -hmm. that, that brings about a, a level of empathy that I think can last a lifetime, but is so powerful to, to, the, to people and to this world. So that, yes. that is great. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So can you expand on, you know, and I know we, we had some great conversations leading up to, you know, to this interview. Um, you know, can you kind of share a little bit about, you know, some of the things that you have going on the school year that, that are centered around that theme? Absolutely. One of the things when I think of St. Francis School, one of the things that stands out first and foremost in my mind is the amazing learning support program we have. Just talking about our differences, I know we have, we talk about people from, uh, with cultural, many different cultural backgrounds, but we also um, welcome students with learning differences. So under this big umbrella of celebrating our differences, one of the big, huge part of what we do at St. Francis is our learning support program. We have an amazing learning support program. I have one of my teachers, Ms. Julie Foster, who actually um, brought this program to fruition and we have run with it. So we do have students who come to us with many learning differences and we can, we can give them the support that they need and help them to get to their potential, help them succeed, help them reach the, their own goals. So we do individualize and differentiate instruction for most of our students, which I think is one of the greatest things that we do at St. Francis. And, excuse me, with that support that we give to the teachers, what we do, I do not have any instructional aids in the classroom, I have learning support teachers. And what they do is they go in to support the teachers during the core subjects like reading, writing, and math. And I think that's when the teachers need the most support. And so my learning support teachers go in to help the teachers with the subjects that they need the most help with. So that way we can individualize and differentiate instruction for all the students. So that is one of the things that I'm really, really proud of St. Francis. And one of the things that I'm most proud of is Yes, everybody pays the tuition, and we do not charge anything extra for all the support that the students get. We do work with Vista Unified quite a bit, but we also give them the support that they need without charging the people with any, any extra cost for the support that we give them. That is one big component of mm -hmm. our celebrating our differences. The culture that with that, we have also built a culture the students that come to the school know that every child learns differently. And it is not uh, a shameful thing to go to the learning support. They are excited to go to the learning support because they know they will receive what support they need, what each student needs. So there is no making fun of each other because you are going to the learning support. In fact, they thrive on that. They feel that they are blessed to have this opportunity to go to go to the learning support room to get the additional help. So I think that I am very proud of that culture that we have built up, that every child knows and appreciates the differences that they themselves have. And so they also thrive on that, making sure that they get the support that they need. 
that is one big, huge component of our um, learning support. Along with that, we also find that, well, I'm going to back up just a little bit. Over the summer, I was um, at Notre Dame with my pastor and one of my teachers for a Latino Enrollment Institute. And the things that I learned there, I brought them back to the school. How can I encourage, even though it was dedicated for Latino enrollment, the tools that I learned there, I could take that and use it with all the different cultures that I have. So bringing that back, I also realized that, yes, we have increased the number of students from other cultures, but the big component of that was the language proficiency of my students. And I felt that having the students come to us, we should be able to give them the supports that they need. So for that, what we did was we, we always do the um, home language survey as soon as the new students come in. And, and based on the language survey results, we, we partner with Vista Unified, our, our local school district, and we do a proficiency, we do the um, assessment to see their proficiency levels. Once the proficiency levels have been established, this year, what we did was we took our, all of our Title III funds and we had the director of the learning support um, for the ELD, sorry, not the learning support, the ELD, um, the English Language Development Services at Vista. She, we, we partnered with her. She came over and did a four-week session with a four-session, sorry, four-session with all of my faculty and staff to make sure that every teacher, every staff member knows how, what the proficiency levels are, what strategies we can utilize to support the students who are not proficient in the English language. That was a huge benefit for our students and our school. So every one of my teachers got trained on that. And for next year, I am going to continue this partnership with them so that this is not just a one and done um, workshop. This is an ongoing process because the more students we have speaking other languages coming from other cultures, more equipped we need to be as teachers to provide the services and provide the support that we need to give them. So that was another big component of celebrating our differences, knowing how to reach out to the students who are not proficient in the English language. And when I do my formal observation with the teachers, I incorporate that in the lesson plan. So I told them they need to give me the list of the students who are ELD students, give, them, give me the strategies that they're utilizing in the class, making, them, making it very intentional, making this purposeful so that the teachers are always constantly thinking about how can I, what can I do to help the students who are not proficient in our language. And the best thing about these, utilizing these strategies is that when they utilize these strategies for the learning mm -hmm. support students, for the, sorry, for the ELD students, this benefits every student in the class. These are strategies that can be employed for every student to benefit every child in the class. So that is a great benefit. That is a great advantage that we have for this year. Along with all of that, I also thought we have students from so many different countries, so many different cultural backgrounds. So this year, we made it intentional, and we made it a, a, a goal for us to have a multicultural celebration in the school. So I've talked to a few parents, and they are very excited. And in May, on, I think it's on May 11th, we are going to have a multicultural celebration in school. We all, every year we participate in the Missionary Childhood Association Mass at the, through the diocese. Every, every, we bring up a handful of students to their, they, they wear their cultural outfits. And I truly do enjoy that. I always wear my Indian outfits and I, and I, and I love that celebration. And so I thought, why not bring it to the school and celebrate it with my entire student body and my entire school community? So that is what we are going to do this year. On May 11th, we will start with the multicultural mass, 
And then what we what will happen is we will have so every student is encouraged to come in cultural outfits, whatever background they may have. We will we will let them come in their cultural outfits, and then we will have a whole day celebration with food, music, dancing. We are in the planning stages. I am so excited about this. I will have to call you back and let you and send you pictures of how everything turns out. The few parents that I've talked to are super excited about this, and I thought, what better way to celebrate our differences through food, music, dances? So we are also looking at what we can bring from in-house, the entertainment. From I know several students have participated in dance and you know of their own cultural background. So I want to bring those in, and also bring in maybe a, a group that does because for our church celebrations, for our church festival, we have other dance groups that come and do entertainment for the for the community. So I would love to bring a group in and have a very special celebration. So these are the things we have planned for this year. A lot of lot of different activities that will bring, that will celebrate, that will bring our cultural differences to the forefront. And one of the things that I did this year was also attend a stewardship conference in Atlanta. And the um, one of the things, one of the phrases that I um, that struck with me was always think about the theology of abundance. With the cultural backgrounds that we have, I always look at what gifts the students and the families bring to the school rather than thinking, oh my goodness, we are we have to dumb down our program or we have to change for the for the to make sure that all the students are learning. This is I truly like to go with the theology of abundance with the abundance of the cultural backgrounds, with the abundance of gifts that everybody brings. Just because they don't speak the language does not, bring, does not mean they don't bring other gifts to the school. So I truly would like to take all of that and celebrate it to, what, to the max, to make it our culture, our one culture of unschool culture, melding all of these different cultures. And one more thing that we have planned for the end of the school year, I know I'm going on about this because I'm so excited about this. Every at the end of, <laughs> at the end of at the end of every year, we do a performing arts, which is a an a show that is outside done on our lawn. All the parents come sit on the lawn. We've got a, a place where all, every class picks a song, we pick a theme and we um, every class comes and performs a song, picks a, a song, and from my little two-year-old class to my eight-year eight-year-old eighth-grade class, they come and perform a dance or some kind of a choreography, some but something together. Parents love it, absolutely love it. So this year, our theme is going to be international songs. So I thought this will be a full culmination of our year with celebrating our differences. So even the teachers do. Of a song and dance, and we probably will. Teachers are, are debating on which country we should song, we should pick a song from, and I think we are leaning towards Africa. So we might pick a song, and that will be on May 18th. So that will be our performing arts for this year, and the theme is international songs. So altogether, I think this year we are really ce celebrating our differences. And this is something, like I said, this will, this has been a subject that is very close to my heart. And I've been, and with this, we have already gained so many more students. We have just over, the, after our Christmas break, we added two students from Korea. We added two, stu four students. We added a total of four students, two um, Hispanic students, two from Korea. And I thought, this is God's way of saying, open our doors and God will bring them to us. So I think this is our, our fantastic year for us. This is, um, this is what I want our school to be known for, for our celebrating our cultural differences in all aspects, not just the cultural background, but our learning differences, our support program, um, coming together from all different wakes of life and becoming one 
student body, one school community, and and give and praising God for our special gifts that God has given each one of us, uh, celebrating our differences and together c- coming together for the good of the world. Wow, that is amazing. I, and you know, and as I was writing, like so. I, I like to always utilize the podcast and have it do multiple things, right? And aside from just being a great knowledge tool, right, uh, in a way to communicate, um, I, just to give pro, you know uh, perspective to everyone. So yes. I, as uh, as Elizabeth was talking, I was um, I had the trusty uh, you know post-it notes. I had a stack of post-it notes in different colors, and I was taking notes. Uh, so you know, if we have students or if we have aspiring uh, interviewers or people who want to want to go into communications or you're looking to you know prepare for a job interview or start your own company or something and as you were talking I was taking notes and every um, you know every subject that, that you kind of touched on um, I you know t- took some shorthand notes on you know got its own post-it note uh, and it, it's great because see there's going to be some follow-up questions that that I definitely want to ask because you pretty much you hit on you know these I have like five or six notes here and you, you hit on some really great topics that I think have been echoed in so many different professional development uh, conferences, you know, amongst the diocese um, and locally in different school districts. And see, like one of them that I want to touch on is I love that point that you made as far as when there's a new um, opportunity or something that pops up where maybe there's a, a new culture that comes on and instead of, and you, you utilizing that abundance mindset of, oh, well, you know, adapting or growing your skills and your, um, and your ability to, to handle that scenario doesn't just benefit, you know, one, one, one student or that, that certain group of students, it actually benefits the whole classroom. And I think that that is, uh, you know, so universal, even in whether it's in the workplace as adults, teenagers, um, if you're traveling and you're doing, you know, say missions work, et cetera, uh, it's such a um, important uh, aspect that I actually love to, you know, to touch on. And, and I want to make sure we bring that to light because, you know, so many people forget that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Because we think, oh, we are using all these different strategies. We have to use all this, but we forget that when, whatever strategies we utilize for to help one or two students, it is bringing more benefit to the rest of the students too. It is not going to harm anyone. Instead, it is going to make their understanding even better. So it is not going to stop them by any means. It is only going to make their understanding and learning even better and even more um, productive. I and. Me being not necessarily the best mathematics student, but the thing that just pops in my head initially is um, I can always know that the answer of four is fine if I kept doing two plus two or one plus three or zero plus four. I can, if I kept doing that my whole life, that would be okay. But uh, yes. understanding that I realize you can also get four by doing 16 divided by four or four times four. Exactly. Work. Yes. Um, I still get five minus way. one. There are so one. many different ways to get there. there. There's so many different ways to get there. So even if yes. you know we have people who are very numbers oriented or very analytical, uh, and mm-hmm. this cultural mm-hmm. side or the these softer emotional sides don't necessarily click with you, um, those that that's something that's just popped in my head right now where I realize mm-hmm. you know, adding or building on top of things. Uh, you know, in that abundance mindset that there's enough for everybody is fantastic, you know, and Mm -hmm. I love that Mm -hmm. you're getting it on the different spokes of the wheel, right? So if we, we, Mm -hmm. we go to that example to give some pictures or visual representation to people listening is the way that you described it. If I, if I take like a carousel or a lazy Susan and it was, it had the different accessories for my food, you know, like I love eating soup. So, you know, there's mm-hmm. people who like to put the hot sauce There's some people who like to put the, the sprouts, you know, and it, yes. like that. And there's a, the, the cool thing is there's a little bit for everybody and, you know, you can mm-hmm. visualize or, or differentiate with what you like to make your dish and your experience great. Uh, but the, absolutely you know, at that center, there's all the accessories and the components and that support that you need to actually make that mm-hmm. soup, you know, delicious to your heart's content. So, right. 
And one more thing to add to that, whenever you add different things, it for maybe for one student, it benefits more. That's, that is what, you know, because I think that is what we forget that oh, when we do one, it is only, only benefiting one student. No, it is benefiting 20 or 30 students, however many students you have in that class. So adding that one extra thing is helping every student in the class. And, you know, I had a, um, just going, you know, going from my notes here to you, I was, it, it made me recall back when I was talking with, with Leslie out in, you know, with, from LA, Leslie, as Mrs. Dell, or Miss Dell, as they like to call her over at, at, um, at her school in Silver Lake. Uh -huh. So I'm, I'm, I'm curious with, say, the, the, the learning sport program uh, and mm -hmm. things that you implemented, what are some methods that you guys, I guess, have taken feedback or, you know, regained data back, like some actual, like, how-tos, like, do you guys have, like, a, a formal survey, paper survey, um, like, exit interviews, you know, like, what, what kind of strategies have you done to, you know, to gather that data? Well, one of the things that we do is when we um, take new students, we do have um, kind of a screening assessment that we give to make sure that this is the right placement for them. Mm -hmm. And we always ask if they have any IEPs so that we know how, you know, what to do to prepare, prepare for the new students coming in. And so once we identify the students through our own assessments or if it is through done through Vista, you know, or the, or the public school, once we have an assessment, even before we get to the assessment part, mm -hmm. one of if the teachers have um, some issue with the student mm -hmm. or concerns or something that they, they know that something's not right, yes. they immediately talk to the learning support teachers and figure out, oh, can we, can we try this strategy? Can we try this strategy? Can we do, because the learning support teachers do push into the classroom yes. and they also pull out you know, for one-on-one -on -one or in a small group. Um, so we do a lot of um, assessments, our own assessments, formative and summative, to just to figure out where they are first. And if it is something that we figure, we feel that they need a little bit more assessment, that's when we have, you know, we have figured out all of our strategies. We have tried and tested our strategies in the classroom, preferred seating, you know, uh, maybe a few questions, maybe reading out the, um, questions to them. So we, we employ a lot of different strategies in the school first. Mm -hmm. And then we, the final one is going to, to the public schools for an, a formal assessment if needed. But once we get that all done, the teachers really mm -hmm. take that to heart and give them the um, supports that they need. And our main um, data point is our um, we do a star assessment mm -hmm. and we see if they're making the growth that that we expect them to and so we really look at the formative assessments in the class how they're performing and also the more of the summative assessments plus the the uh, the standardized testing the star assessments do give us and so with the star assessments we have a lot I mean I love star assessments because we can do this mm -hmm. for we do them um, you know three times a year for all of the students but if there is a student we feel we should see where they are. We can give it to them more, more than three times. We can give the test to them if just, just to see if they are growing the way we should or, or he or she should be growing or if it is having an effect what we are doing. So that with the teacher observations in the class, the, the formative and the summative assessments kind of drive our instruction, kind of decides oh, the, what we did is not working. We need to change and we do try other strategies. Oh, this strategy is really working. And, you know, the student is making strides. Student is growing. So we look at data very, very closely. We analyze the data constantly so that we make sure that, to ensure that the students are getting what each one needs. So to make it more individualized and personalized for, for each student. So that is our data, and that is our data analysis that we do. We also do um, our benchmark assessments for writing, reading, and math, other than the STAR, based on the, the actual curriculum that they are teaching. 
So those also as a faculty, we do look at the data, we look at see where the students are, what strategies are working, what, and we also calibrate the, you know, when we have an assessment, when we do a benchmark assessment, we will all come together as a faculty to calibrate it. Okay, this is, this is our rubric, how are we doing it? Are we all doing it so that it is all aligned to what the rubrics are? Not so that everybody, the, it's a whole school doing the same type of assessment so that it makes it a level playing ground for everybody. So it's not that, oh, one class they get this assessment, the next class, next grade they get another kind of assessment. It's aligned vertically from kindergarten all the way through eighth grade. So that gives us a lot of feedback on where our students are going, what they're doing, and how they are improving or not improving. And based on those data, we can change and, and, and give them the right supports. No, that is very thorough. That's, that is very thorough. And I think um, recently I know, you know, St. Michael's and a lot, you know, there obviously I know there's other schools, you know, either last year or even this school year who are going through, like, say, their, their WASC assessment. And, you know, I know yes. some of those key things that the, the teams, the evaluation teams are, are looking for that, um, that homogenous, you know, that, that same. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. thing, uh, throughout. That alignment with, that, yes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. And mm -hmm. you know, that, you know, you brought up something too. I'm going back to one of my other post-it notes here as you were talking. Sure. Is I was really mm -hmm. curious, are there other, you know, schools like say over the last three, three to five years, are there other schools that you've, you know, taken inspiration from, uh, modeled from, uh, currently like work with, like say other schools that have reached out to you to kind of emulate some of the, you know, the successes that you guys have had with your learn with your learning support teachers? In your learning support program absolutely we it actually the north county cluster we we you know the principals meet every month and and we do share a lot of things that are going on in the class in in our schools so that others can learn from us others can you know get ideas and we talk to each other quite a bit for okay this is happening in our schools does anybody have any idea how to fix that problem or how this is one of my concerns. So we have a lot of conversation with our principals, which is very, very beneficial. And the diocese also has a learning support, um, kind of one, like you spoke about the one of the spokes, learning support is a big, huge component of um, what the diocese does in sub, to support all the schools. And my, my teacher, one of my teachers, Julie Foster, who's also my vice principal, um, she has been instrumental in getting that together. So for St. Francis, it is a great advantage to have her at the school here because she was the one, like I said, who um, started the program and, and it has taken wings and we are flying with it and we have grown so much from it. But having that uh, collaboration with the diocese and the other principals is huge, is, is phenomenal because we cannot do it on our own. We need the support of each other, the collaboration with each of the schools and the other schools that are doing the same thing. And what we do is if, you know, we have, we have visited other schools in, the, in our diocese, we have visited other schools, we have talked to other principals from other dioceses. So there is a lot of collaboration that goes on and to help each other. That really helps us. That is cool. And that that's one of those things that I was really picking up on over, especially the last you know five to six podcast episodes, is mm -hmm. a lot of these principals and these leaders or you know ad, uh, administration members, uh, you know, for a diocese or a parish or what have you. There's that common theme of communication, collaboration, um, absolutely, you know, research and data, mm -hmm. and then you know the, the thing that I'm really passionate about is actually putting it into execution and then measuring. Mm -hmm what it is so that, you know, you can either adjust it or, you know, keep doing more of it or, you know, yes. obtain more resources so that you can properly do it. You know, um, that, that is, that is so, um, that is so, you know, critical to actually have, yes. uh, you know, it be successful and being a model for what you're trying to do, you know, for the, ultimate absolutely. Customer, right. For the ultimate, mm -hmm. customer, which is the students and, and their families. <laughs> 
Yes, absolutely. Every one of those students that walk through our door must, we, we promise them we will give them the best we can. And if we don't have the resources, <laughs> we need to find a way to get the resources because we have to keep our promise. Right. Because for every one of those students that walk through our doors, we have to make sure that we are doing everything we can to meet that child's need. And if we don't, we are not doing our job. So I really work very hard to make sure that whatever the need is that we are giving him. And if I don't have the resources, how can I get you know, help from advice or other? It is not always about money. It is about just maybe an idea that somebody else has done and go, oh, that really works. And we could try it. So that collaboration is huge. That is what keeps us all going. Amazing. And the diet. And the diocese now is like, it's really, really supportive of all the schools, providing all the professional development that they are offering mm -hmm. to help the schools, you know, gain understanding and knowledge and, and able to help each, every one of our students. That's amazing. And I know that is a different, you know, it's, it's a new world out there, you know, it's a, and especially, Absolutely. you know, with mm -hmm. education and you know, I, I want to take a moment and actually you know, celebrate you and, and thank you uh, so much for really exemplifying, you know, especially with your school, you know, your, your ability to be so uh, dynamic and empathetic in, you know, your, the faith, the faith and worship, you know, showing that aspect also the, the super high level and, you know, the drive for, you know, scholastic achievement and excellence, you know, in the classroom and outside the classroom. And especially, most importantly, that level of stewardship, um, not just for your community, but also understanding the communities and the families outside. Because at some point in time, when they come across, you know, you, your staff member, your students, or your your families and your community, uh, at some point in the future, they and they they may become a member of the Saint Francis family as well. So I want to you know congratulate you for being such a, a leader and you know a, a game changer in that sense. Thank you so much for having me. It has been my pleasure. It has truly been my pleasure. So thank you. Thank you for doing this no for everybody. And for those, you know, if they, they're they uh, moved by, you know, what you're doing or if they're considering St. Francis as an option, like if they live you know, out there in Vista or in the neighboring counties or, you know, communities there uh, by your school, uh, what's the best way to go ahead and find your school and also reach out to you? We have a, a website would be a great way to get a hold of us. That is www.sfs-vista.org. Or our school number would be great to call the school office. We've got um, uh, my office manager um, who speaks English and Arabic. My, my receptionist who's, who's bilingual in English and Spanish. And I, myself, am... am got many languages all the indian languages so we've got a truly multicultural office too so you can call 760-630-7960 to reach our school office either way would be great awesome well principal elizabeth joseph it was an honor to have you as a guest on our podcast you're doing fantastic things for everybody who has gotten to listen to this episode definitely check on their website, we'll keep up with their, you know, with their school newsletters and communications because the one, th you know, some of the things that are super fantastic that will be coming up, you know, are there two events on May 11th and May 18th. So please check out, you know, details from, you know, their leadership or their teachers or their community, um, you know, for that because it sounds really exciting um, and the food sounds or doesn't sound actually tastes like it's going <laughs> to fantastic party yes um you know for everybody who participates All right. it will be awesome thank you thank you and for everybody else that's that does it for another episode of the sma audio experience podcast look for us um next week when we have another person making waves making a difference in, here in the catholic school community of san diego county take care for now Thanks again for listening to another episode of the SMA Audio Experience Podcast, brought to you by St. Michael San Diego's technology and social media team.
For more information, go ahead and visit our website at www.smasandiego.org. On Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, we use the common handle or username of SMA San Diego. So you can definitely reach out to us there, leave a tweet, a message, a post, a comment. Uh, we'll be happy to engage with you, answer all your questions, and really join in part of sharing the St. Michael San Diego story on social media and on the internet and also via the podcast. So thanks again for listening. Take care, and we'll hear you next week.